स्टार्ट मिस्टर डिप्टी चेयरमैन सर वी आर डिस्कसिंग द बजट फॉर द ईयर 1961 टू 62, व्हिच इज द फर्स्ट ईयर ऑफ द थर्ड फाइव ईयर प्लान एंड देयरफॉर इट इज अप्रोप्रिएट दैट द फिनेंस मिनिस्टर हैज गिवन अ बर्ड्स आई व्यू ऑफ व्हाट हैज बीन अचीव्ड ड्यूरिंग द फर्स्ट टू प्लान फुल स्टॉप The economic review also gives a comprehensive view of our achievements as well as of certain shortcoming here and there. I would therefore congratulate the finance minister and his ministry for placing before us a realistic picture as has emerged during the last 10 years and the approach which the finance minister thinks we should adopt towards the third 5 year plan. This is not or an ordinary budget for one year or for two years this budget should be looked at from the point of view of the beginning of our next journey towards the third five year plan the finance minister has been bold because there is nothing secret about the budget in the plan period the third plan as it has been presented in the draft form is before the people there it has been envisaged that in order to see the plan through about rupees 170 crores would have to be raised in the country both at the state and at the center level so the taxes which have been imposed in this year's budget were not something which came suddenly he has therefore to make a bold and courageous effort not to play to the gallery but to be realistic and practical if we have go to see the third plan also though i have been saying on the floor of the house that the tax burden has been more or less increasing from year to year i do not want to repeat what i said last year but it is clear from the economic survey as well as from his speech that during the last 10 years the tax revenue of the country both central and of the states has increased most of it has clearly come out of either excise duties at the central level or sales tax at the state level we are also not to forget that when development takes place industrial centers and population increase the municipalities and the corporations have to levy various taxes their revenue generally comes out of what is called octro octroid duty now somebody has got to foot the bill of development and this bill more or less during the last 10 years has been footed generally by the people in this context one has to analyze the situation and find out whether these taxes have come out of nothing or whether these taxes have come out of something more which has been put into the pockets of the people as a result of the development that has taken place in our economy The survey says that the national income has gone up by about 40%, the per capita income has gone up by 20%. How that has been distributed among the various sectors of the society is a matter which is under investigation and I hope before long the committee will be able to place before us statistics regarding the distribution of the national income. There is one thing which comes to my notice and it is this when we are having a planned economy it must be based on actual statistics. our statistical apparatus in this country is really defective probably it is in the course of making if we point out the def defects of the government and the planning commission as we see them they might create a better apparatus so that from year to year we will now exactly where we stand as the honorable finance minister has stated in his speech production has increased more or less according to our expectations industrial production has increased more or less according to our expectations industrial production has gone up during the last 10 years by about 66% agricultural production has gone up by one third but if you look at the industrial production from a wider view it gives a better picture from the index figures of industrial production that have been supplied one finds that there are in this country certain established industries like jute textiles etc if the rate of production in new industries like the steel industry the increase in electricity and certain other things are taken into consideration we will find that the production has gone up by about 100% now actually this is the achievement as far as the two plans are concerned therefore in trying of criticize or make comments on this year's budget particularly have one has to take stock of the situation as it exists as a whole certain trends have been visible the trends how that prima facie during the last 10 years certain concentration of wealth has taken place the government has recently appointed a committee which will look into it 
सर एज ए टीचर आई एम प्लीज टू नोट दैट द गवर्नमेंट हैव अपॉइंटेड एन ओल्ड टीचर डॉक्टर कोठारी एज द चेयरमैन ऑफ द यूनिवर्सिटी ग्रांड कमीशन वी आर प्राउड ऑफ हिज स्कॉलरशिप एंड ऑफ हिज डिवोशन टू ड्यूटी एंड वी फील दैट अंडर हिज एबल able guidance the university grants commission would be able to render increasing service to the cause of education in this country i am glad to know from the education minister that the university grants commission and the education ministry functioning harmoniously but i wish to point out that in the last report of the university grant commission the commission pointed out certain difficulties in carrying out its responsibilities i do not know what steps were taken afterwards to remove those difficulties and to ensure to the university grants commission autonomy which is its due sir we are holding conferences of the ministers education and conferences of the vice chancellor of the universities and i feel that we should have conferences of the chairman of the university grants commission of various states in spite of that chancellors of university and we are dealing with the various educational questions if there are university grants commissions in certain states and if they are not functioning properly it is the duty of the education minister at the center to deal with that problem also in the conference to the ministers education of the various states if they find some difficulty in having a conference of the chairman of the university grants commissions of the various states i do submit that the universities are not functioning autonomously as perhaps the education ministry wished them to function i know that in the last report of the university grants commission it was stated that freedom is vital to good education and democracy and i know that our education minister today alone repeated the same idea in other words but i am afraid that interference in university education is Uh, is rapidly increasing the bureaucratic spirit is tending to dominate the university life much more than it would when we were under the british regime universities in certain states are tending to the instruments of the government's policies intra party conflicts at government level and often conflicts between the state governments and the union governments in certain cases cause difficulties in the administration i do not know that for the present state of affairs teachers and students are to an extent responsible but i beg to submit that the higher authorities are in no way less responsible for the present state of affairs in our universities without mentioning names we know that proper care is not taken in the appointment of vice chancellors if the system of election has failed selection by government has proved no better so far as the cries of the vice chancellors are concerned in many universities the directors of education are chosen as vice chancellors and i have reason to believe that their selection is in general resented by the professors of the universities concerned i do admit that some of the directors of education might be fit even to be in charge of universities but i do feel that if the government wish that persons in charge of secondary education should also take interest in university education it is proper to appoint them as university professors before they are appointed as vice chancellors of universities i have in mind a person like dr amar nath jha who belonged to the provincial education service he served as a university professor had experience of university education and then when he became the vice chancellor of the university he discharged his duties as vice chancellor admirably well i wish to point out that personal character wide human sympathy interest and understanding of university education capacity for leadership faith in the democratic ideals reputation of learning and confidence of the authorities are absolutely necessary in a good vice chancellor and proper care should be taken in devising ways and means of selecting proper persons as vice chancellors of universities i welcome the new pay scales of teachers of the central universities i do wish to point out that there is a great need for the amalgamation of the grades of lecturers and readers most of the teacher conflicts are due to these two grades of lecturers and readers and greater harmony will prevail among teachers in case the two grades subject to certain efficiency bar are amalgamated I do feel that there is no marked difference in the abilities of teachers of central and state universities and there is need for equalization of the pay of teachers of state universities however may be responsible for the difference in pay the country would suffer if there is no equalization of pay because this affection would continue and this will tend to spoil the university life and standards i wish to point out that some system of transfers should be encouraged by the university grants commission full stop over